Hey there, and welcome back to the Pedalorian. This time we're doing some major motor and battery upgrades, which means getting rid of this thing, which is a beast of a trolling motor that weighs a ton and is pretty slow. It only gives us about two or three miles an hour if we're lucky, and that's going with the wind. So we're gonna replace that with this. A 3000 watt e-foil motor, sort of thing they use on electric surfboards. It's made by Flipski or Flipsky, whatever the hell they're called. And we're gonna connect this to some lithium batteries. And so we've got a lot more power, a lot less weight, and we can see if we get above four or five miles an hour, who knows? So let me show you how to put it all together and we'll see what sort of speed we reach. Let's start with the wiring layout. So here are the basic components of the system. We've got four 12 volt lithium batteries but we're wiring those in series to create a 48 volt battery, which then powers the motor, which is rated from 25 to 84 volts. The more voltage you put in, the more power you're gonna get out of that motor. That is controlled by the speed controller, which controls revs and the power going into the motor from the battery. And before I carry on, I just wanna say that this is purely what I did. I'm not an expert in this. I've just looked at some YouTube videos, read lots of stuff online, and kind of cobbled together the system. So do your own research before playing around with batteries, cables, and motors, because I'm not gonna be responsible for you burning down your house. Okay, let's start running through the other components of the system. The first and most important is the shutoff switch, which basically just kills the power from the batteries to all the components in the system. Then we've got various fuses, such as the 300 amp fuse that goes from that shuttle switch to the batteries. Uh, we've got a voltmeter that shows us all the amps and voltage and watts that's going through the system. Then we have a Victron Smart Sense, which is a little monitor that we stick to the side of the batteries to monitor the temperature and the voltage that's running through them. And this makes sure that we don't charge it from the solar when they're too cold or if they're getting too hot as we're using the motor. We've also got a Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller, which regulates all of the voltage coming in from the solar panels that we use to charge the system. The remote control connects to the speed controller via Bluetooth, and this gives us a throttle, basically, so we can control the speed of the motor. Finally, there's another fuse, and then all the different cables that connect all the system together. Add in a few solar panels and that gives you enough power to charge the batteries over a day or two. After hours and hours of crimping, cutting our wires and putting them all together, this is how the battery box finally looked. With everything hooked up, you then connect your laptop and use the VESC tool software to connect to the speed controller. And there's lots of settings on there. Check out Ludwig Prey's amazing tutorial video on YouTube for all that sort of stuff. Now it's time for the first test in some water. Bloody hell. And here's the final install on the Pedalorian with the motor, the speed controller, and finally the battery box. The main things we've got in there are the batteries at the bottom, and there's the 60 amp breaker, which we use as a switch for turning on the speed controller. You'll also notice at the back there, the white big switch, which is the solar shutoff switch. Now it was time to get the Pedalorian in the water for the first time with this new motor. We're just paddling out here to get out of the slipway and as it was a bit of a breezy day, uh, it wasn't the best conditions, but we thought we'd do a few tests just to see what sort of power the motor had. Power on the remote. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> Fairly low red. This shows how much better the motor is in the breezy conditions. It glides off the slipway so much quicker than just pedal power. We 
did several tests back and forth to see what sort of power we could get out of the motor and how much amperage it was taking from the batteries. speed tests with pedal power alone and then again with the motor. Here's a quick speed comparison test between pedal power and the motor. While they seem to be going about the same speed, at the end of this test you'll see that the motor is over 30% quicker. The results weren't too bad for an initial setup, but I needed to go back to the VESC tool and change some of the settings on there for the battery and the motor, and so that the speed controller would put more power into the motor. The default throttle curve on the VESC tool is just straight, so that means you're going to get instant power straight to the motor with no real control over it. You want it to be a lot smoother than this, so that as you touch the throttle, it's nice and gentle and then builds up. So this updated throttle curve should achieve that. Similarly, the speed settings and calibration is completely off. It thinks we're doing 22 miles an hour and that's definitely not right. So we can change some settings to get it closer to the real speed. This was the perfect time to return to the land as the wind was really picking up and testing in windy conditions is never ideal. Only the bravest of souls seem to be venturing out in these blustery conditions, like these explorers on their land rubber boats on the River Thames, bound for far-flung shores, no doubt. Meanwhile, in the marina, the local wildlife were showing us how easy it is to glide through the water with almost no effort and leaving a lovely wake behind you. Right, let's get back to fixing the VESC settings. As the VESC tool thinks the speed is coming from the wheel diameter because this is really set up for an e-skateboard. We can change those settings to be a smaller wheel diameter so it calibrates the speed a lot better. That said, the VESC app does connect via Bluetooth on your phone to the ESC speed controller. So it can lock all the information from the GPS on your phone, which is a lot more accurate, but it's always nice to see the speed on the real time data readout. Another thing you'll notice is that the heat of the ESC in the bottom left hand corner is getting quite warm, so we'll come back to the solution for that a bit later on. As well as making changes to all the VESC tool settings for the motors, I also updated the prop shafts for the pedal drive so that they were straighter and a lot more efficient. 
Up next was the installation of the LED headlights together with the LED strip light on the flux band and front bumper. Naturally, I installed some LED lights on the rear too. The lights are all controlled by these switches on a very temporary dashboard I've set up. And that dashboard consists of a fuse box with lots of wires and they're all linked up to the USB port, 12 volt display, horn and the light switches. I've also got this display that shows the volts and amps coming out of the 48 volt battery. And there's a little 12 volt battery that powers all this section. And there's the snake's nest of wires on the back, all connected with little Wago connectors. I've also installed three 50 watt solar panels in series, so they'll easily charge the 48 volt battery pack in a day or two. After tweaking all the VESC settings, I was back out on the water for a quick speed test. Things were going great until that pesky heat on the ESC rose up to 80 degrees, which meant it wouldn't deliver anywhere near as much power to the motor. About half the power was getting delivered. So it's time to install a proper heat sink. This meant using some aluminium to dissipate some of the heat. But in addition to that, the big key to this was using a heat sink for a computer with some water cooling tubes. And we also put some extra bits of aluminium all the way around the ESC to dissipate more heat. And with all the water tubes connected, we would use a primer pump, which is the sort of thing they use for fuel pumps on a boat. And by squeezing that, that pulls up water through the tubes, around the heat sink, and out through the other side. So we could keep squeezing that to cool down the ESC. This was just an initial test, and an electric pump will be set up later on so we could properly cool it continuously. Back in the water and with my co-pilot raring to go, it was time to do another speed test and to check if the cooling system was actually working. Getting up to maximum speed wasn't a problem and we continued to go for quite a while at full throttle but soon we noticed that the heat was getting up on the ESC. So a few squirts of the primer pump and that put some cooler water through the system and slowly brought the temperature down. Certainly well below the red line again. So now fitting an electric pump onto this water system would really be beneficial. At max speed of around four miles an hour, we were pulling around the 60 amp mark from the batteries, and that was getting us up to around 900 watts going through the motor. We did peak out at about 930, 936, but that's as much as we could get it with the current settings. I might be able to tweak it a bit more, but then my other plan is to add another motor for more power. Join me next time when we take the Pedalorian back out on the broads to give it some speed tests with the new motor, get absolutely blitzed and blown away by some amazingly fast sailing boats, and have an encounter with the Ranger. But were we speeding? And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. And if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, why not? And follow me by subscribing to the channel and you'll get notified next time we do another video, which should be very soon.